Hello again, this is Randy, your saw machine man, and again, what we're looking at is one of my favorite machines. It's Sears Kenmore. This one is a model 158 14301, and it's got all the good features. You know, it's got the straight zigzag, three step zigzag, overlock, single overlock, double overlock, serpentine stretch. It's got all the cool stuff. It's got the stretch stitches, got the regular stitches, stitch length, stitch width, lever reverse, bobbin winder on top. It's got the adjustable pressure for doing darning, mending, stuff like that. Standard tension. Just a real nice machine. It's a flat bed. And uh, this is a real good little machine. And of course, I made a real quick video here just to show you. When I get these for sale for a customer, I, I get them, I recondition them, and I'll show you basically what that's all about. This little guy here is just like brand new. It had a couple little issues we had to deal with. Uh, just as a rule, uh, I always uh, check the motor and I always make sure the motor brushes look good and that's what this is if you can see that in the picture that's me showing you the motor brush and this is like brand new so the machines had a little use not a lot but it's a good little machine and I check the motor brushes and make sure they're good and then after we do the motor brushes of course we got to check the belts I made a little video for the belts and when you're uh in the bottom belt, which you replace, you, of course, oil this idler and make sure that it's free wheeling. And while you're at it, you look to make sure there's no thread wrapped around it that's going to cause a problem. Because every now and then there might just be a little bit, and it's good to get that off. So then you have a good gripping surface for your new belt. Just the little places you got to know to look to head off problems. So you get the bottom belt put on. This belt is a uh, 1100, which means 11 inch. So when you order a belt for the bottom, uh, the other one had a couple little issues, a little ding in, I guess. Uh, it just needed, to, it, it sat for a while. And oil will sit on it and it'll cause it to deteriorate. So we got that taken care of. And then uh, let's see, what else did we do to this guy? Well, getting that belt back on can be fun. And then you got a fool with getting the belt back on. Uh, what you do is you make sure the belt is loosened as far as it'll go. You loosen this guy here on the motor, push it all the way up. Of course, you have your bottom belt in place because it's not going to be tightened yet. You're going to do that last. Then you have to get this side cover on. First, you put the hand wheel through. The hand wheel will come through with no belt on it. Then you put the belt on the pulley down here bring it up here because you have plenty of slack because you have the motor all the way at the top and you slide it around here and then you put the side cover on after you clean out all the grooves and all the tracks make sure everything's clean where it's friction drive you want it to be dry and where it needs to be oiled you oil it and that's how you put the side cover on it's a bear to put on if you don't know how to do it and now you know how to do it Okay, and after you put the side cover on, you got the belts on, you got to make sure the belts are at the right tension. And after you put the side cover on, you put the two, uh, two bolts in the top up here. You got one there, one there, put the side cover on, and uh, you tighten your belt by bringing down, right down, it slides down in the bracket, and then you put, you want to leave a little flex on this, you don't want it real tight, like a banjo string, you want it to be loose enough, <clears throat> so the hand wheel isn't real tight, if this is real, real tight, your hand wheel will get tight, and your machine will run labored, and your motor will get hot, you don't do that, so you want it to run as loose as you can, <clears throat> so when you're, uh, see, I put a new, I put a new stop, clutch release on here. I took the old one off. It was uh, genuine Sears, but there's also genuine plastic, so I took that off because I'm not a big fan of plastic. So sometimes you can replace it because this stuff's standard and interchanges. Uh, so I put a new uh, metal one on, and then uh, when you release it, of course, to wind, I'm just going to hand it over to here. And I didn't like the way that is, so I did it again. After you put your side cover on, put your screws in, one, two, and you go down and tighten up the 
motor. So the last step you do is tighten up the motor. You slide it down the bracket. A lot of times it's just real easy. It slides real easy. Let's put a screwdriver over here. Just slide it down, and you tighten it so it's got a little slack. You don't want it to be real tight. When you release the hand wheel, you want the motor to be able to run at a high speed, keep the motor cool, and then when you engage the clutch, engage the clutch, then it'll run at a good speed, keep the motor cool. Put your hand on the hand wheel, and if you don't get any, you know, you gas it and it doesn't get a lot of slippage, and you know it's tight enough, and you can turn the hand wheel, and it's not so tight that it labors everything. So that's getting those belts replaced and checking out the idler and all that stuff over on that side. That takes care of that. Okay, so that takes care of making sure the belt's at the right tension and making sure your hand wheel's good. Let's see what else we got here. The next step, of course, is down in the uh, hook assembly area. Okay, in this area, it's about uh, making sure that the needle plate is cleaned up real nice. Uh, what I like about this machine, it's got a real thick needle plate. Some are kind of thin and they get flimsy. and you can just about bend them with your fingers, but this one's a real, real heavy one. Of course, it goes in place. Just take the screws out, uh, clean underneath, and then just, it just lays back in place. And it's also easy access here. Take the hook assembly out. I've done videos on how to do that. Polish the hook, put it back in. Real smooth. And of course, a gearbox underneath, just like all these 158 series steel gears. Awesome, awesome setup. Of course, in here, we oil everything. If it slides, it gets a drop of oil. If it hinges, it gets a drop of oil. Hinge, slide, and a little plunger there. Everything that moves. Then you get access to everything. Everything gets access. It's easy to service. That's why these machines are just totally awesome. You go through them A to Z and not overlook anything, but it's all right there for you. It's got the best tension assembly. Put it on four. Forget about it. Maybe shy of four, but that's what's great about these. Okay, moving right along. Uh, I think we're going to wind a bobbin next, and then we're going to be just about ready to hit it. And of course, you want to wind a bobbin. This uh, has the best bobbin winder system. It's pretty standard. You bring it completely around the guide. Make sure it's between the little disc there. It's spring-loaded. Make sure it's between. Then you bring it around the bobbin. I'll do this with one hand. I don't think I've ever done it with one hand. And then you... Uh, Snip the end, put it up through, put it up through the hole. Let's see if I can do this somehow with one hand on this camera. Yeah, through, and then you hold on. Oh, don't pull it back out, that would be good. Put it up through the hole. And then you hold on to that, you engage it, and you hold on to this. Let it run because you don't want any thread sticking outside. It'll cut itself off automatically. You want all the thread contained within the walls, of course. And then when it's full, it'll shut up automatically. If you want to put it half full like we are, you just undo it and you're done. Okay. And after we wind the bobbin, we're ready to do some sewing. This machine is all reconditioned. Belts, make sure the motor brushes are good, clean and oiled, hooks polished, the needle plate polished. This is just like brand new, like it just came out of the box. If some manufacturer would fire these back up and make these, I would take an initial order of a thousand of them because I could sell them all just like Girl Scout cookies. Oh my gosh, it's an awesome machine. That is the Sears Kenmore 158.14301. Awesome little machine. This one's spoken for, but if you can find one of these, grab it. If you can find somebody who'll, you know, refurbish uh, it for you, that's good too. But out of the box, they're going to be pretty good. They're not going to have too much wrong with them, but, you know, stuff like a belt, maybe motor brushes. But good machine. If you start out with good stuff, it's worth rebuilding. These machines are worth rebuilding over and over again. They're awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot.